Hello, Arlington Knights, District 25, and uh, welcome again to another 25 with Tech 25. I am, again, your lone host, Tim Higgins, Secretary uh, of Tech 25 here at the uh, District Admin Office. And uh, so today, we're, I figured, since again, I'm alone, uh, we would continue with, with iMovie from last week. We're going to just pick up where we left off and uh, dig a little bit deeper into it. So for any of you who tuned in last week, um, who may have already been familiar with, uh, with iMovie, and we're hoping for a couple of tips and tricks that you may not have run across before, uh, tonight is your night. Uh, so let's get started. I'm going to switch our screen over, and we will take a look at, uh, at iMovie. So and I guess that being said, if you're tuning in now for the first time or missed last week, uh, and really have not explored iMovie at all, the best thing to do would probably be to reference the email that was sent out to all staff members um, about an hour ago and click on the little link down at the bottom of the email that will link you to the YouTube page where we archive all of our videos um, from the past few weeks. Um, and that's where you can get your basic start into iMovie. Um, and then by the time you're done with that, this one actually should be available um, on that same page and you can kind of go from there. Um, so let's get started. And so I am, once again, we're going to open up uh, the most recent version of iMovie, the little purple star here down at the bottom of our page. And uh, I've already opened up our project from last week, kind of picking up where we have left off. And so I'm just going to maximize that out of our doc. And here we are um, with our familiar uh, bubbles, the turtle footage from last week. Um, as you can see, I've also taken a little bit of time and taken a little bit more footage. So we have a little bit more to work with. Um, I have some example clips um, that a lot of people may often run into, um, especially if you're taking video from a mobile device like an iPhone um, or an iPad. Uh, and we will talk about that here in a minute. And I would just like to, again, reiterate, if you're joining us for the first time um, and missed last week's episode, uh, but sort of all this video stuff is it's kind of all around us. And the reason for it is it is really a great tool for communication, um, whether it's with your students, whether it's with you know parents, kind of showing them, keeping them in the loop of what's going on in your classrooms. Um, if you're another district staff member that is not, um, a teacher, you know, it's great for training, um, for archiving a piece of information so that you only have to say it once and they can direct people towards the video that you created. Uh, for many different reasons, video is a more, I guess, a more useful, I mean, engaging way um, of getting information to people. People like watching videos because you can manipulate a little bit more and really focus people's focus on, on whatever subject you're looking to talk about. Um, and we can all do it. We all have, or for the most part, we have smartphones. We have uh, access to all sorts of mobile devices here in our district. Um, so I, I highly suggest trying to make, make videos and, and use them to your advantage. Um, so again, I shot all of the footage uh, that we are working with today on just the, on the iPhone 6. Um, we're kind of at this point where all of these cameras and uh, that come with all of these mobile devices have gotten to a high level of quality, and really you don't you don't necessarily need the you know heavy expensive cameras uh, that you would have needed years ago. Um, so let's just jump right into it. So last week we talked about how to import footage, how to you know choose little clips out of our raw footage and add it to a project, um, how to add transitions and titles. Um, so we're going to start about there now. Like last week, we just had some of these top clips up here. I, however, wanted to add a few more clips to it. And you don't have to add all of your footage at one time. You can accumulate it over time and, and keep adding it into your event. Uh, and the way to do that is up here on our higher, on the, the top toolbar, we have an import button. If we tap that, it will give us, again, a, a little bit of a modified finder. And depending on where your footage is, um, you can choose it, and mine was on the desktop in Turtle Clips, and I'm adding the January 28th clips here uh, to our project. 
Uh, another great way, especially if you've used an Apple device to to get your footage here into your pro or into your um, computer, we actually have a link straight to your iPhoto library, where it will also display um, the events that you've imported into iPhoto, um, and you can actually just straight from here choose the clip and drop it right into your video. <clears throat> So now that we have um, our, we have found where our clips are, we've added them to our project. I want to talk about a, a little bit about some of the different um, manipulations you can do to to enhance your video, to make your uh, video that much more aesthetically pleasing and towards your uh, your end goal of communicating what you'd like. Uh, and again, with all of our mobile devices. They tend to to record in this sort of this vertical um, video format with a lot of black letter boxing on both sides of it. Not the you know most attractive looking thing in the world, um, but in iMovie we can easily and quickly uh, remedy that. And so what we want to do is now the clip that we've added is clip of bubbles eating. Um, if we click on it, highlight it with our yellow box to tell iMovie that this is the exact clip that we want to mess with. Um, Way up here at our top toolbar, we have this little adjust button. As soon as we click that, we got a little toolbar of all sorts of different icons on here, which we will go through um, and talk about. The first I would like to mention is our crop tool. And if we click on that, yet another little toolbar opens up. And it gives us a couple different options here. Um, it's always defaulted to fit. So it fits the screen no matter what the aspect ratio is or whatever aspect ratio it is set to. So it'll just take your full movie, stick it right in there, it'll add black letter boxing to sort of fill out the rest of the screen, um, giving us this, again, not really visually pleasing kind of video. And it's, it's, it's zoomed out because we're not optimizing all of the, or the shape of the video that we're, we're looking at. So fit is great if you've filmed it on a camera in, the proper aspect ratio, but if you haven't, if you've done it on a, on a phone or some other device, um, you may have to come in here and select our crop to fit. And what will happen here is you'll get a little white um, cross here that you can drag all through your um, all through your clip to sort of find the center of the action that we want to be um, concentrating on. And so I'm going to put it here on uh, bubbles, kind of going for this. A little bit of food here on the corner of the tank. And down here at the bottom, we get to preview it. So if we hit the little play button, we see that it'll zoom in exactly into where we've selected our video in the crosshairs. Um, and as you can see, it really is now utilizing all of our space. Um, we have zoomed in quite a bit, but I think it, it sort of adds and makes a little bit more sort of intense clip than if it were just from our phone format. So that is crop to fill. Um, the next little button on here is, is the Ken Burns effect. Now, this is more for if you have a whole bunch of pictures in here. iMovie is a great program for putting slideshows together and being able to customize them a little bit more. It, it works a lot better um, if you are looking to um, add video and pictures in here. The Ken Burns effect is one that everybody is relatively familiar with, I would think, if you've you know watched any, especially documentaries and and presentations of all sorts that have pictures rather than video. Um, the Ken Burns effect, and I will click down here, I actually have a picture um, starting off our project. If I click on our opening picture of Bubbles' face, select Ken Burns, it gives us two of those crosshairs now. So the crosshair that we were just looking at with the crop to fill, it gives us two and a, a little yellow arrow. One of our boxes is labeled end and one is start. So as you may guess, um, the start video is the, we're selecting the first frame of our clip that the presentation is going to, or the Ken Burns effect is going to start with. The end is where it's going to end up before it switches to our, the next clip in our project. Um, and really what, it, what this effect does is it just gives a little bit of motion to what would normally be a stationary picture, making it a little bit more engaging, a little bit more interesting to look at. Um, and just like with our crop to fill, if I hit our play button down at the bottom, It'll give us a little preview of how we've set it and what we will see in our end result.
another button I want to point out here in our in our um, effects editing window is this little full screen, you know, this little preview button that will um, play it, and it will just play that clip. As we saw before, if you just hit the play button, it'll play through here, um, and it'll just move on to the next clip. If you're really concentrating on enhancing one clip at a time, this little button on the left-hand side will be a little bit keep you sort of controlled in the area that you're concentrating on. Um, you can also, if you're looking to get a full screen idea of what's going on, you can tap those two arrows pointing away from each other and you'll get a full screen view, which will give you a better idea of what this presentation or video would look like um, when you're actually presenting it. And you can easily just hit the escape key to enter back into editing mode. So I'm going to scroll down here. And as we see, the clip that I have in here is quite long. Um, this little slider up here I wanted to point out to everybody that it adjusts the view of the clips that you have going on in your project window. Uh, if you bring it down to the left, it'll shrink down the clips and make a long video easier to manage and easier to navigate. Um, of course, then if you need to sort of get down to a specific you know, frame or second of a clip, you can always slide it back out and then get the full, um, the full length clip. Another side effect of filming on a mobile device um, or a, a non-traditional camera is that you get that sort of that letterboxed, but you can also get it um, get images turned out of the orientation that you had originally uh, thought you'd be using for it. So down here we have a clip of um, it's a bird's eye view clip of bubbles in her tank sort of looking up at the camera. And if we, again, click it to select it, highlight it in yellow. Um, another option that we have in the cropping section is the rotate option. Uh, and if we just click each, click it through, we can get it to the orientation that we would like. Again, it fills it out to the full um, HD aspect ratio, giving us a lot more video for our space um, and kind of I guess uh, directing our attention specifically to our subject instead of being you know feeling like we're much further away so this is our cropping option the next set of tools I would like to draw our attention to is our uh, color correction the first one is this little sort of a, a paint palette um, and if we click on that we just get a couple of of these color bars with little handles on them and what each of these things does is it lets you adjust different parts of the image um, this first section here lets us adjust our highlights our shadows and our midtones um, to kind of brighten or darken our image to to our liking this is where we're sort of we're we're kind of stepping away from the simple throw a bunch of clips together, make a make an easy video. This is where we're kind of you'd be devoting a bit more time to to play with all of these little adjustments, but it really does end up giving you a much more professional looking um, end result. And so you can see that you can sit here for all sorts of time adjusting. You know, if we want to brighten this up a little bit, um, and if we want to sort of darken the water behind bubbles, our tucker turtle. Uh, you could do so. Now, say we set it, and we've you know we made it too dark. We want to go back. Over here, way at the right hand side of our little toolbar, is a back button, and it'll bring you back. It will revert you back to our original image. Always a good tool, especially um, if you are experimenting um, in terms of of messing around with your highlights, your colors, and all of that. Um, the second section here is our saturation slider. This is where we can easily make a color picture, black and white, if that's the effect we're looking for. Um, you can also slide it way to the right-hand side and really liven up all those colors, make it look like a, I don't know, like a 1960s Technicolor. Um, again, depending on sort of the idea that you're going for. And then finally over here, um, we have our hot and cool slider where it, it really just it introduces blue or yellow to your picture to either warm it up and sort of enhance your yellows, your reds, your oranges, or we can slide it down to the left to enhance the blues, the greens, um, 
again, depending on the kind of look you're looking for. And so we're going to kind of warm it up a little bit so we have the, the yellows and the oranges uh, pop out a little bit. And we're going to saturate it a little bit, again, to sort of enhance that color, make it a little bit more uh, aesthetically pleasing of a, of a picture here going on. Mr. Fano has entered the room. is is really is all about color correction. Um, he likes he likes vibrancy in, in all of his videos. Gotta bring it. Chris is over there. He's editing his own videos together that will be available shortly on the YouTube page. Uh, they're just going to be artistically beautiful as well as informative. So the next section of uh, of adjustments that we can do is here on this this first little box um, and it's talking about matching color where so if we've adjusted the the color the vibrancy on one clip um, we can attempt to sort of uh, to duplicate that into another into another section so as we can see if I click on this color match we all of a sudden now bring up two frames or two Two frames of our same video so I'm playing with the one that we've adjusted and then I'd like us to select from one of these other clips and we can see that as soon as I click on the clip from the day that I uh, recorded bubbles when she was in her algae filled tank um, it has adjusted our um, nice clear water to match the older grimy or dirty one however it kind of draws those clips together um, making it more visually uh, cohesive look makes them look the same. So if you're filming things on different days, you can sort of match the lighting, match the color, make everything look um, similar. Again, if depending on your use, you may not need to to kind of go to these lengths for these details. But if you're really looking for a quality video, this is the sort of stuff that you can use to to really liven it up. Um, we also have white balance, uh, which you'll notice that if you've ever filmed something in, in especially like a gymnasium where they have uh, like the more like the halogen, I believe, lighting, where it kind of gives it that orange feel to it. Um, light is measured, and I'll get boring here for a second, measured with uh, by temperature, temp temperature in uh, Kelvin on the Kelvin scale. Um, and to not get, again, too detailed and into it. Um, that halogen lighting is at a much lower temperature of light than say um, an incandescent light in the classrooms and so the way that the camera and these programs adjust for that is if you bring sort of like just a white sheet of paper or you have something white in the frame um, if you click on this white balance section you see that you get a little eyedropper and if that white piece of paper or that white object in the room um, is on camera you can click it to tell the, the program that you're adjusting for this is what this is the color white and it should adjust it for whatever this temperature is to make it it'll typically take that yellow out if you're doing it in a gym um, or adjust it if it's too bright it'll drop the colors down to sort of make it look um, a little bit nicer so this is white balance is a very quick way uh, to bring your colors to, to look the way that they're supposed to um, the other option here is skin tone balance. Obviously, we don't have any humans in any of this video. It's all green and yellow colored turtle. Um, so this won't work in our examples here. Um, but this is another one where you can sort of balance um, skin tones and make it look just a little, make people look a little bit more, uh, you know, closer to their, you know, their tone, depending on whatever the lighting is, because it can make, um, it can, screw up the, the look of the of the video and then once again up to our toolbar down here at the right hand side are some of the more fun ones uh, we can when we click on our little turtle icon we can change our speed so we can go slow-mo we can speed it up or we can go custom and adjust based on percentage so we can go at you know 50 percent speed um, or we can you know, go to 200% and really speed it up. Uh, we can also reverse the direction of the clip so that, I don't know if you're looking to, to back something up, that's a common um, effect where 
maybe somebody goes through forwards, like falls into a pool forwards, you can duplicate your clip, reverse it, and so it looks like they're flying out of the water uh, back up onto the diving board. So is that how they do the lift up stuff backwards too? That would be a way to, to turn a, a lift up backwards. So if you were looking to kind of flip, so like where you know, it goes forward, backwards, forward, backwards, you can take the same clip, you would just copy it four times on two of those clips. Uh, you would just select the reverse, and you would get this sort of nice, quick back and forth little effect going on. It's a great idea. No problem. Obviously, uh, Fano has a uh, music video in the works, lift so everybody, a lift up music video. So keep an eye out for that one. I'm sure it is going to be extremely entertaining. Also, be on the YouTube channel. Also on our Secretary YouTube channel. Next to our little turtle, um, speed and direction icon we have um, our video effects and our audio effects um, I'm not gonna get too much into it but this is sort of where you can kind of again add some fun to uh, to your video clips um, very easily just like we would add the titles um, or a tra tra uh, transition to our clip um, you can flip your video you can add different filters to it this is sort of our um, I know Instagram options on uh, an iMovie where you can add different different filters to to adjust uh, the feel for your uh, for your video. Um, and just like with some of those other effects, you can just scroll over it, and it'll give you a little preview of what that effect will look like when it is fully rendered um, in your final final video. In the same vein, we also have audio effects, um, which will sort of manipulate the sound. Uh, if you're looking for to make it sound like you're in a big room or outside, there's different echo effects, um, as if you're talking through a telephone. And you can, again, you just select it, and it will uh, add that effect to, uh, to your clip. So we only have a few minutes left, and so I want to come back here. I, last week I talked about how you add music to a clip, but didn't have any actual example files. Um, I have actually added some music um, to my iTunes account. And so if I come down here into our content library and click on iTunes, we see that I've added two songs here. And just like anything else we've gone through in the last two sessions, if we just click and drag our song down into our um, into our project, we see that we get this green, <coughs> excuse me, this green bar down at the bottom, um, designating or notating that this is where our clip will be. Um, we see that we have a little audio waveform here, and if we bring our cursor down onto that line right above the audio waveform, and we click and drag, we can adjust the sound for the entire, the volume rather, for the entire um, clip. So if I again. Remember that with our playhead, we can hit the space bar, and we can play through our video. If that is actually at a, a too high of a volume, we can click, and we can drag it down and adjust our sound right there. Um, and just like our video clips, we can also grab um, each end of our clip, and we can drag it to fit it to size. So I'm going to drag us way out here on our... So we're seeing all of our clips in one, and I'm going to drag it down, and I want this Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme to end somewhere right about here, and I want Happy Together by the Turtles to start up right after. <clears throat> so we'll throw a couple transitions in here. We're going to come back in. So I noticed that as we get further into this clip, sort of our, uh, we have left the Ken Burns on here. So I want to do crop to fit, reset that, and leave that where it's supposed to be. We're going to come back here to the beginning. 
I'm going to close out of adjust, which will then put us just back to our normal preview window. And then if I bring my cursor up here, we can again hit our full screen mode and we can preview our whole video um, with effects rendered. Now it might seem a little bit jumpy when you're doing this preview and that is because our effects may not have rendered all the way through, um, which they will when you export the video. And so here is our music layered on our adjusted clips uh, in full screen mode the way it will look when you present it to whoever your audience may be. Um, and again, I just want to point out one more time, our share option up here. If we click on that button, we can come down here, we can send it to YouTube, um, or, and we can just, you know, next. I can add, tell it, tell um, YouTube what my account name is, so I can add it to the T. Higgins YouTube account. Hit OK, and it will upload it to YouTube. Um, or we can share. We can just save it as a file. Next. I want to save it as a turtle video on our desktop. And we can click Save. <clears throat> And so, in conclusion, again, not not everything that uh, iMovie offers it can you know this could be a whole class in and of itself. Um, but I think I have a hope that I've given you a couple more things to look at to play around with, and uh, I would just encourage you to get out there, make some videos, uh, flip your classrooms, highlight some of the great crazy things, um, creative things that you're doing in your classrooms. And, uh, and share them with us. We'd all love to see it. Um, and I'd like to start featuring some videos here um, on 25 with Tech 25. So um, if you get some videos put together, please share them, send them my way, um, and we will feature them to our viewing audience. Uh, everybody have a great evening. As always, uh, if you have any questions, you can email uh, me, Tim Higgins, at thiggins uh, at sd25.org or at tech25 at sd25.org. Thank you again for joining us and uh, 